Hi YouTubers, this is another video from your friendly neighbourhood reviewer, Evelyn. So as promised, today we're going to be reviewing the new Scream movie that came out this year. This movie is the fifth instalment in the Scream franchise. The Scream movies were originally directed by Wes Craven. He was well known for creating the Nightmare on Elm Street series with the iconic figure of Freddy Krueger. And again, he goes and helps create another prominent figure, Ghostface. The idea behind the original Scream movie was a take on classic horror movies and putting a little tongue-in-cheek twist into it by having teenagers obsessed with the idea of becoming famous through killing and mass, you know, similar to mass shootings in high school as also well known in America. So this new Scream movie is supposed to be set at least 25 years after the original killings. The big twist within the original Scream movie was, spoiler review if you haven't seen the original, the main girl's boyfriend and another friend, they were there organizing the killings, they wanted to become famous for doing multiple killings. That was their whole ideal, a perfect movie that they wanted to create. And we get in, in the first Scream movie, we get introduced to the Final Girl, as they like to say within horror movies. Sydney Prescott, played by Nev Campbell. She gets, we get introduced that her family's broken up, you know, her mom got murdered, and a guy was uh, accused and charged of the murder of her mother. We see that Sydney Prescott has a boyfriend, Billy Loomis, and there's another group of friends. And then all of a sudden, her friends get to be killed on one by one off. And the big twist at the end of it that the killer Ghostface wasn't just one killer, it was two killers. Sydney's boyfriend Billy Loomis and another individual Stu. So Scream 5 is meant to be a play on from the first one and they wanted to provide I know, something of substance I guess. So the beginning of Scream 5 we have the introduction of the first casualty. Very reminiscent of the first movie, they like to do it in each Scream movie, you know, a, a hark back to what happened to the original actress that died in the first one, who was played by Drew Barrymore. So we can see inspirations by Psycho by killing off, you know, a well-known actress. Drew Barrymore dies at the beginning of the movie as she picks up the phone and then we get those immortal lines from Ghostface. To be honest, Scream 5, I felt like I did nothing of substance because we get introduced to Tara Carpenter, a young girl who answers the phone call and we see with this modern age, instead of manually locking everything, everything's done with an app and apparently Ghostface has come back and started to go on a rampage. So Tara has a sister called Samantha Carpenter. Samantha gets the phone call that her sister's been brutally attacked and she's there in a different state with her boyfriend. For some reason she doesn't want to go back to Woodsboro but of course her sister is gravely injured so she goes back there with her boyfriend Richie played by Jack Quaid. And then we see some reasons why Samantha had run away for five years leaving her younger sister behind. Apparently Samantha found out that her mother was cheating on the dad and she even found out that her dad wasn't really her dad. That her dad spoiler warning, is Billy Loomis, Sydney Prescott's ex-boyfriend, now deceased. So as Samantha's there trying to figure out who's this ghost base, you know, the origins of this stab movie, we see Tara's other friends, with, you know, well-known actors, the boy from 30 Reasons Why, and well, that's the only one I recognize, which is Minette. Again, I'm bad with surnames. We see the friends and they're all acting very awkward around Sam but where as soon as Sam is investigating more of the disturbances Ghostface turns up again to the hospital to attack again her sister. Before that, before that happened Sam investigates what's going on with Ghostface because she receives a phone call from the person indicating that they know her secret and that's what forces her to tell her sister about the reason why she left, the reason why she was acting out as a teenager. We get introduced to the remaining original character that's still living in Woodsboro, Dewey Wiley, played by David Arquette. We found out that he's divorced from Gail, um, played by Courtney Cox, and he's very depressed and that he even got asked to retire from the police force. We can kind of see he's living in deep regret with the breakup with his wife. 
and then he gets a knock from Sam and her boyfriend Richie trying to find out why Ghostface is back and how they can survive this other reign of terror but Dewey like basically tells both Sam and her boyfriend that anybody can be your killer this happens you know every so often that teenagers have a romanticized view about what went on in Woodsboro and these fictional movies that it's meant to portray what happens because Scream is kind of like a movie within the movie in the sense kind of a bit of inception going on Dewey you know tells the, the two young people that he's not willing to help and it's like just to leave him out of it but of course he feels obligated to call Sydney now this is the part of the movie that I just you know of course Neff Campbell Courtney Cox and David Arquette are the original OGs but put them back for a reason the only sub the only link that they have here is Sam being the illegitimate child of Billy Loomis fortunately Sam's like having these like hallucinations in her deep conscious thinking that she's gonna turn out to be a serial killer like her dad so when Dewey calls her Sydney, she let he lets her know that Ghostface is back, like not to come back to the town. We see that Nev is there jogging with a pram, so we assume that she has a kid, you know, family, and she of course tells Dewey, you know, I'm not going, I'm not going back, of course. He, she tells him to stay safe, and she assumes he's still a police officer, so he, but she tells him, you know, you'll be the man to do it, but she doesn't know that he's retired from the police. And when Dewey hangs up, he goes and sends a, a text to Gail, also not to come back. And he kind of feels obligated to go and help the two young couples like Sam and Richie talk to the other teenagers. All the other teenagers get circle around in the house because there's twins in the movie, a boy and a girl. And apparently the mom was another, like the sister of, so apparently the twins in the movie, his mother is the sister of one of the killers, Randy Me Meeks. So everything gets pinpointed back to the original. And Dewey goes and talks to everybody that anyone could be a suspect within the group of friends. Could be love interest, could be so on. Because this harkens back to when the Richie and Sam go to Dewey's place. He go Dewey goes and tells them that could be your boyfriend. All of a sudden he turns up, somebody of a loved one. And for some strange reason, he kind of nails it in one. Well, that's me spoiling, spoiling the story. So, as, so I'm jumping back to when Ghostface attacks the younger sister in the hospital. Everybody gets to the hospital. And then we see the struggle between this this ghost based and Dewey and the guns not being shot off. Tara manages to escape with her older sister Sam as well as Dewey put, goes and puts them in the elevator but not before shooting ghost based in the chest which I just this part of the movie was like shoot him in the head you know in the moment that the person's collapsed you know don't worry it's most most important to doing the killer taking off the mask and seeing that it's like a woman whatever but woman guy you know but he doesn't do that wanting to be the hero pushes both girls into the elevator and unfortunately Dewey dies with Dewey's death this forces Sydney to come back to town but before Dewey died Gail comes back and then we have this intense interaction between the both of them which shows that they regret splitting up particularly Dewey they couldn't hack moving to New York with Gail so Sydney comes back with Gail and they all decide that they're going to defeat Ghostface once and for all. They tried to convince Sam to help them, but Sam was like, hell no, I'm getting out of here with my sister and my boyfriend and we're getting out of town. And she harkens back to, you know, the most common things that people who watch horror movies, you know, shout to the characters within the TV that for them to like go, don't stay. But however, Sam is having none of it. She doesn't want to hear about Sydney. She doesn't care about her story. The only thing she cares about is keeping her sister safe. So they go off, but mysteriously as they're driving, Tara can't find, the younger sister can't find her inhaler. And Rich is like, oh, we need to go, we need to go, we need to go. And then in that moment, we see Rich's behavior turn a little bit strange, a little bit forceful. So inadvertently, Sam tells Richie they need to go back to pick up her inhaler and, they, and she turns out that she left the inhaler in her friend's house where they were, and this house that everybody's having a party every, the young teenagers, everybody so they go back there and Tara finds an inhaler but they end up you know telling everybody to get out from the party and we end up finding out that Ghostface is there is going to attack everybody is there killing each party girl one by one 
Oh, not each one, but it's like mowing down the, the friends of Tara and Sam. And we see that Sydney had put a tracker on Sam's car and it followed her right back to the original house where it all started. And there's a fight that ensues where everybody is trying to figure out who's the killer since they all know that it's a common thing within these movies or within these situations that there's two killers, there's never one. There's a great monologue within the scene with one particular character, the, the twins, the girl. She goes and talks about that this is a requel. In her monologue, it was interesting to look at the take. You know, the monologue was kind of like the screenwriters or the movie producers telling the audience, we're trying to give you something different but bringing back the original somehow. So by the end, all the end of all, you know, Sydney gets there, but before she gets there, we end up finding out that one of the friends, then we find out that one of the friends, Amber, she's one of the killers. Then they end up unmasking her and she ends up to be Ghostface, which I found to be a bit unrealistic. Like, she looked quite tall, this Ghostface, but we never really put, you know, imagine imaginations that, you know, the height difference between both of them. So it was like a big shocker. I thought it was some other girl, but it turned out to be her. And while everybody undercovers this, we see that Richie is there kind of like telling Sam that probably her sister Tara could be the other killer, the other accomplice. And we get that moment where Sam finds her sister you know, duct taped into a closet and we, we don't really see whether she you know, releases her or not. But we end up finding out that ba -ba -ba, Richie is the second killer. And it's both her and Amber, they start talking about how they met on Reddit, everybody obsessed with the stab movies, and that they thought the last movie was crap. So they wanted to do a new movie, a better movie. And this whole screen movie, the new one, added nothing or substance, as I said again. Literally, the people who made the script was like, okay, let's address all the, all the viewers' gripes and you know complaints about the previous movie and let's tell them directly we're giving you what you want i just find it insane insane the idea that people keep on copying the same thing and expecting a different result maybe that's the whole thing about the screen movies showing teenagers that no matter how much they think if they do something the same time in a different angle, that it's, all, it's always going to be the end result. That murder is murder. That them trying to glorify being murderers is not going to be a happy ending for them. So there's a struggle as Sydney and Gail go to the house. They both take out their handguns, and then Amber runs runs out pretending that she's been attacked. But Gail does not is not having none of it. So Amber goes and shoots Gail right in the stomach. <sighs> I was shocked at that bit. How could they shoot Gail? <laughs> and then by the midst of the fight, everybody ends up getting stabbed. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna cut to the chase here. Sydney gets stabbed, Sam gets stabbed, and this girl. So there's three girls that stabbed up and poor Taro with her injuries from the beginning of the movie. This I just spent most of the movie in a in a boot and cast and like deeply suffering. And the end is like they, they, they kill both of them. There's no real end result. The only thing was the only thing poignant about the end was Gail, the ever eager reporter. She decides she's not going to report on these killers. She's not going to give, dignify them by glorifying them in the news. Instead, she's got to play homage to her late ex-husband, Dewey, which I find a bit ironic, the scene that both Dewey and Gail had. As we know, Courtney Cox and David Arquette were married in real life and they had a child and they got separated. Maybe playing out a little bit of their argument or their feelings right on the script. And of course, this movie was dedicated to Wes Craven. He died in 2015, which was sad to hear. So in a sense, this is like a dedication. Okay, YouTubers, this video has been incredibly difficult to film. Had four interruptions, three restarts, and I hate restarting something because you end up losing the energy of the feeling that you had in the first take. So again, thank you to all those who have subscribed. Give a like, share and subscribe, and please leave a comment of what you think. Anyway, see ya.